Hi, everyone. Um, good morning, host. We're a little bit early today. I know I, there was some stuff changes on the webinar jam site, and I wanted to make sure that we didn't have any tech issues like last time. So we have Alejandra, and I cannot pronounce your name, Prithiva. I'm going to kill it. I'm sorry. Eugenio from Brazil is here, and Suzanne from uh, Real Woodstock, Illinois. Is there a fake Woodstock, Susan? I wonder. Um, we have Cheryl from Boston, from Rochester, New York. We have Kathy. Irvin, Irvin, you always, why are you always fighting in caps on our group? What is up with that? <laughs> I have questions. Oh, God, Alejandra is already starting the idea with questions. How many nights does a sheet set last, in your opinion, or how often do you buy new sheets for your Airbnb beds? This is to calculate costs. Um, it really depends on the sheets that I get and if they get stained or not. Um, it also, I, and this, I'm answering Alejandra's, <laughs> Arvind, don't be sorry. I'm answering Alejandra's questions already. we like starting with a bang. Um, so, Alejandro's question is, how many nights does a sheet set last, in your opinion, or how often do you buy new sheets, new sheets for your Airbnb bed? I am always buying sheets, man. Sheets and towels, always, whenever I find the sale. Because then you start figuring out, like, okay, this is how much it normally costs. Um, and as you guys know, I'm, I'm a big fan of Target. When there's some good sales are August, for um they have sales for going to college in January, which is like the white sales. Um they have like linens and towels and things like that. January is a really good time to buy stuff. And I know you're tired probably from the holidays and everything else, but keep a little bit of money aside. Um I've had sets that lasted me years. I mean like literally years. Um while I've had other sets, like I bought some sets at Costco, but I was using um, bleach with them and the material, the fabric did not support it. So I've eliminated bleach as part of my cleaning and I am, oh my God, oh my God, I'm sorry. I just read something, but I'm going to continue this, this talk. Um, so I eliminated bleach out of my um, laundry um, schedule. And I just use OxyClean, and I use really hot water, and I let them, um, what is it, for I count it to buy? I buy over 300. And I actually wrote a whole blog post all about sheets. It's on my website, evelynbedia.com. Um, and I actually gave you links of the sheets that I actually have. So what I, what I do is I get sheets that are really good. Um, Threshold has a great performance brand that I really like a lot. I don't buy their organic or cotton because they get wrinkled a lot. They come out of the dryer very wrinkled. So for me, it becomes like, you know, like, eh, it's not worth it. Um, I, because I don't iron unless they're really bad. And even then I really don't iron. I just don't. Sorry. Um, but I get embarrassed. Like there's some sheets that I'm like, oh my God, they're so wrinkled, but Hey, whatever they're clean. They're clean. Um, so threshold is a brand that I love. Um, and actually on my side, on that particular blog post, I even linked you to one set that I, I still have. They're over a year old right now, but I'm always buying sheets and replacing because it's not that they don't last in reference for, for the material, but also, um, you want to use, you know, I keep using different things. I have one, two, three, four, five beds. In total, so this, I mean, and I need to have a, to have about two to three sets per bed. That's my recommendation, a minimum of three sets per bed. And the reason for that is, let's say if you only have two sets, um, one set, you have it on the bed for your guests, and then you have the second set. But what happens if it gets stained, or if it gets ripped, or something happens, like, it has happened to me where the fitted stayed in the because it's white, so it's, it it was not replaced out, so the sh the set is not complete. Um, you know, I have not tried IKEA sheets and linens. Um, I'm sorry, I'm a snob. Yeah, what can I say? I I like I like I like Target. Um, and they're not that expensive. It's really 
Um, it's about thirty dollars, forty dollars, and they last you for a while. So I, I mean, I figure if they if they give me a year worth of um use, I mean, and we're talking about use and abuse. So, um, but I oh my god, I used to have these amazing sheets from Restoration Hardware. Yeah, they were my sheets from when I was working as a producer, and they were just amazing, and they lasted for years. <laughs> <laughs> Until I started doing Airbnb with them, um, but they were like over hundred dollars set of sheets, you know. So yeah, and I don't buy those anymore for them for the gas. I haven't even bought those for me. I buy, um, I I do keep, um, keep some sets differently. Yeah, um, um, Louis said Century Twenty One has amazing sheets and towels, and yes, I bought some Century Twenty One sheets and towels. I find Target a little bit easier. They deliver to me in my house after twenty five dollars. Purchase this free delivery, so it comes all the way here. I don't have a car, so it becomes um, a little bit like whenever I'm shopping and things like that. Um, Judy Loon is saying Costco hospitality brand towels are nice and things. I guess they are. I tend to also buy the Costco a big set of the hand towels and the washcloths. And I don't know, hey guys, have you seen like I don't know why I get like these little dots of. Um, I don't want to call it rust or something, but it's like little dots, yellow, that they just don't come off from the sheets. And I'm like, not from the sheets, from the towels. It's mostly towels and mostly like the hand wash, you know, the little washcloths, which I personally don't use. And I don't know how to take those off. And I get really upset about that because it's like, why? Um, but I have a full closet that is all guest towels and guest sheets. But my recommendation is buy on sale, Start with two sets, but do three, um, and then you just, you know, you will continue to replenish and buy and buy. Yeah, it is one of those things. Um, I've had sheets that they've torn or they get caught on something. So yeah. So <laughs> people are asking why people use the washcloths because people do. I think I, if I remember correctly, when I was like a little younger person a little girl in my country of Puerto Rico uh, I believe we used to use washcloths and I don't know when I stopped but I don't use them I find it kind of gross so yeah and Lou's saying I have a rotation for my sheets and I know which she said I used last that means that the one sheet is not warm yeah I have I, and you have about 12 sets imagine 12 sets and Lou you only have is this Lou from Queens my Lou um okay you're Puerto Rico yay my hometown um so you just you know i rotate i try not to use the same sheets all the time but you know it's it's like i also have some winter sheets that are flannel um and not just pull them out because i'm giving heat but it's kind of weird weather uh, <laughs> um cheryl is saying they use washcloths to wash their bodies how do you get your body clean if you're not scrubbing it with a washcloth I use my hands. My hands. I have my watch cloth. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, that's like hi guys, you're just starting. Um so Lou is saying he has 13 sets of sheets and he rotates them evenly. I don't I'm not that specific of rotations, but I do try. I do try to rotate them as much as possible. And and I know my my I do feel the threshold brand has lasted longer than others. Um, and believe me, I'm always buying sheets. I also, you know, something else I got, I like to get them at Bed Bath and Beyond. They have a clearance um, aisle, and sometimes they have like sets Euro pillows, which Euro pillows are really expensive. The Euro pillow covers they're like thirty dollars or fifty dollars for one pillow cover, which is like outrageous. So I try to buy them on sale. They have this usual like area and and i get them from there so those are the sheets and towels questions for today i just got uh christy said i did order some pillowcases when you told us there was a seller board threshold they weren't a soft discuss really i'm surprised it depends on which threshold you bought um christy saying that she bought um some target tr threshold stuff and then we're not as soft as costco yeah look we all have our <laughs> annie's saying i'm tired of sheets for the love of god uh okay so <laughs> we've waited for a lot of people i know we talked for, for, we could talk about
how she can toilet paper forever. All right, so let's start with today's conversation. And I am one more time happy to have you guys here. And today we're talking about the cost of your Airbnb. Um, so let me present this to you guys. <laughs> um, two rooms instead of entire homes. Irvin, you're asking me questions about New York, and we're going to talk about that later on. All right, so Anne wants us to get back. Um, it's okay, Lou, we talked about sheets for five minutes. Okay, so <laughs> let's talk about what is the real cost of your Airbnb. And and I don't know why this has been a really rough presentation for me to create. Um, I, I just had some resistance with it, but you know, resistance happened. All right, so like always, um, this is not an Airbnb event. What accent, Kim? I don't have an accent. <laughs> it is not an Airbnb event. So um, they they know about me, they know of me, but they don't sponsor me. They don't give me any more money besides hosting or anything like that. I ask you to not multitask. Um, just give me this time for, for us to learn. And also, you know, update Facebook later. I love you for that, okay? So I started in 2010. Most of you guys know me, but just in case we have some newbies here, I started in 2010. Um, my Airbnb and the house Evelyn was born, and then in 2012, that's Brian Chesky. Just in case you don't know, um, he is the Airbnb founder, one of them. Um, and I've been speaking about Airbnb since 2012 when they tapped me to talk to other state legislators with this law that we just have. So um, then in 2014, and you know, I've been, I started talking to you guys because I spoke way too much about Airbnb to everybody. So I decided, let me not teach, let me just become a consultant and a coach um, just so that we can all talk about this. In 2015, I was at the Airbnb Open, and I'm going to be at the Open one more time. So I hope you guys will be there. I'm teaching. Um, it's a the same class as last year, but it's going to be a new version of it because things happen this year that are affected. So today we're talking about what's the real cost of your Airbnb, and we're going to talk about very quickly your expenses and your time. So in reference of your expenses, what is it the cost to start recurring? And then the surprises that we forget about and we're like, oh my God, I, I wasn't planning for that. Okay. So in expenses, when you start out your Airbnb, and I know that there's a lot of you guys out there who are experienced hosts, you've been doing this for a long time and you're like, oh my God, I, I don't need to hear that. Um, oh, why is this presented like this? I'm so sorry. Um ah this is just not it's it's one of those days all right so so creating or updating the space whether you have um a space that it's um you already created it and and everything else so now it becomes what do you do um do you need certain things for it like do you need a lamp do you need um some new sheets ha <laughs> ha um do you need anything new for that space if you have an extra room or if you're offering an air mattress in your living room i know a bunch of different hosts that do this they offer um you know uh, just a, a sofa bed so do you want to buy a better sofa mattress or a cover foam for it so those are things that you're going to be spending a little bit of money um, if you're setting up an entire um, apartment, that's more cost. That's very costly. And it becomes the whole like, oh, well, why, how much am I spending? Okay. So it could go from a few thousand dollars if it's a studio apartment to at least five to $10,000. Okay. Um, so setting up an apartment and and please i want to say this to you if you have an ikea apartment and there's nothing wrong with ikea i want you to not write down that it's a luxurious apartment i saw this in somebody's um headline title and called it luxurious and then there was a review saying this is ikea it's not luxurious Luxu luxury it's not ikea luxury 
it's luxury. And even this, look, this is not an IKEA parlor in this this image, but it's unique and it's sort of quirky and it's sort of you know pretty and things like that. Um, correct, can be very costly. A whole house Airbnb, totally, Jenny. You have to think about how much it's going to cost per room to set up. You need. If you're gonna get a sofa, I might recommend this to get a sofa bed so you could have more people staying there, but that's more wear and tear. Um, because you're gonna have more people in the house. All of the things that you need, and I have a list um that I provide and mid-century, thank you so much. Um uh that I provide with all the things that are needed in a house from your bedroom to just from just the bedroom and included the extras. And I could give you guys, you are welcome to use that later on. So the question becomes what do you need what are the expenses and for you to really calculate and for you to decide is it worth it okay um linens and towels we just had a big conversation about that you are going to be spending a lot of money on linens and towels and you know this is just going to happen okay uh, Chris is saying, love the chairs. Those are costly, not Ikea. Definitely not Ikea, but you could probably buy them in an antique store or you could have some furniture that you have extra in the house. Um, I have, what I did was um, in my full private apartment, the, the tenant needed to leave the country. So I bought her furniture. It was all Ikea. Um, you know, now you're you know but i started updating it and upgrading it as i went along okay so um linens and towels you're going to need some new ones you're going to want to do that um and just get that straight okay you're going to need more groceries even if you don't let them use the kitchen i hope um oh eugenio saying what is kia kia is ikea um uh, ikea I, I don't know how to say it in Brazil. It's a store that, that you see um, that is very popular. Um, Kim, is, Kim is saying that she's had good luck buying furniture on Craigslist when people move off the island and need to get rid of stuff in a hurry. Exactly. You, you will be able to find some stuff like that. All right. So you will also need to shop for some more groceries, even if it's just more cleaning supplies, if you don't let them use the kitchen, you might have a coffee maker in their room or something like that, and hopefully you do. So you're going to be costing those, and you have to make sure that you include that in your expenses. And this is just your starting prices. This is just your starting costs and your starting expenses, okay? Then, um, you know, now some recurring expenses, some expenses that you're going to have all the diff all the time, right? You spend, you know, you build the, the apartment once and you're not going to have to build it again, but you're going to have this recurring expenses and you need to budget for that. All right. So your rent or mortgage, that is going to, you want to be paying for that, whether you have a guest or you don't. Your utilities, they might be a little bit less if you don't have a guest, but you're still going to be paying them every single month. Okay. Laundry, that is a cost that's going to happen only when you have guests, but laundry is something that is going to be recurring and it's going to happen all the time. Whether you do it at home and you have a washer dryer or you take it out or you have a, a system that gives it to you, you know, like a company that does your laundry for you. Household supplies from soap, shampoo, toilet paper, the big one, toilet paper, everybody talks about that. The food, if you provide, and the recurring expense that we never think about is Airbnb's fees. Airbnb will continue charging you 3% as long as you have a guest coming in. And it's 3%. And you have to think about that. That is part of your expenses that you have to budget on that is going to be continuing happening every single month. Okay? Um, also, if you add, if you are in different platform fees, um, let's say, for example, VRBO used to have a yearly fee. And now I know they're going towards a per booking fee, but they have that um chris is asking are the fees going up there has been a lot of conversation about that especially with the italian market um but i have not confirmed it and therefore i'm not going to say they are or they're not airbnb tries better test some stuff and then when they get a lot of pushback from the host then they decide not to okay so 
I want you to think about this. And look, this is for us to have a conversation about this. What is it? What are my expenses so I could think, am I making money? All right? So your rent and your mortgage, your laundry, your supplies, your food. All right. Expenses that are surprised that you probably didn't even think about are your taxes. Whether they're your personal taxes, you're going to be taxed on your income. Don't be like, oh my God, I thought this was not going to be income taxed. Yes, it is. Taxes and your money from Airbnb, whether you get a 1099 or not, because they're not giving out 1099s every single year to for different reasons, unless you make us 20, over $20,000 um, and have over 200 bookings a year. But you still have to declare that money. Just because you didn't get a 1099 does not mean you don't have to declare it because Airbnb will report it. Okay, so you have to account for taxes, put 30% aside and those and put it just like for taxes. All right, you're gonna need towels and linens replacement because those things get broken because they get torn. So, just you know, a great thing to do is just put 10% outside um, monthly of your income just for replacement and repairs. All right, another thing is if you use any outside companies let's say for example if you're using guesty they charge i think three percent or beyond pricing or you get your money up from with payfully or you get a report from air dna these are all expenses that first of all they will be tax deductible but you know um you get you still have to account that you're spending money every month with them all right so surprises taxes linen and towels Anything that breaks, um, I just had, um, I just had um, brand new windows installed in my house, and I couldn't get the AC screw because it will, the, um, the it will void the lifetime warranty of my windows. So, because the season is almost over, I have not found the solution. Well. I guess decided to open the window where the AC was on. The AC fell down the window and it broke and it's about a $300 um, AC. The guest is paying for it, but, you know, we're sort of sharing the cost a little bit because, you know, th they were not expecti expecting um, for the AC to fall either. There's also insurance, exactly. So all of those, you know, those are the surprises, those, but those are... <laughs> um, if there's insurance, if you use a cleaning company or you use a management company, if you use tools like Guesty or Beyond Pricing, those are expenses that you have to be um, accounting for. And look, you might do all the cleaning yourself now, but if you get sick, um, and this happened to me about two weeks ago, I was I had a really bad head cold. I couldn't even have I didn't even have a voice. I couldn't even make a bed. I was so tired. So I had to hire a cleaning person. I spent like $300 in a week because I had I was having those two days turnovers. And just because it's two days turnovers, it doesn't mean that the house does not have to be clean. It just has to be clean. It has to be charged and all this other stuff. So, um, you know, put aside a little bit of money for emergencies like that, okay? All right, so this is a price expensive. Now it comes, this is the what I'm telling you that I have that I could give you as a cheat sheet of all the things that you need in a private bedroom. This is my recommendations, all right? Um, yes, um, TOT tax is basically some places, and, and that's included on the taxes and not just personal taxes, but do you have sales taxes? Do you have hotel taxes and things like that? You have to account for it. So this is just um, a sample of... Um, Give the give you everything. So Sandy saying that they have everything from linens to soaps and toners to maintenance supply and equip them. I love them. HC Supply is a large company with a hospitality division. But the question is, how much is that costing you, Suzanne? So do you need to do um, a comparison, a price comparison of how much is that costing you? Uh, Marley is asking, do you guys get extra insurance apart from home insurance and Airbnb insurance? Marley, uh, my home insurance is a uh, bed and breakfast insurance. So it is for short term rentals. Okay. Um, Suzanne is saying, I can send you my stuff to do. Participate sample stuff. <laughs> All right. So 
you know, I want you to, it's not that I don't want you to use this resource, but I want you to calculate, am I making money? Is this really the best way for me to utilize for um, the space? Or is it better for me to have a long-term tenant? Um, did you calculate the slow months that you have? So like that you're saying, okay, look, I, in New York, January, February, March, it's slower. So I have to calculate how much money I need to make every single month. All right. Um, and if I'm not making that money for those months, I'm not going to make the same amount of money that I make during the summertime because that's the high season. Um, and let me just, just get this out of here. Um, but yeah, we just want to make sure that what you're doing, what you're thinking about doing Airbnb, um, that it is worth it for you. Elizabeth is saying that I feel that I use Airbnb suggested prices. I will not make any money. And actually, Elizabeth, um, I use, a, I have a, a, a price, a price idea of how much i need to make so once you cover all your expenses you have it all down or how much um christy i believe you buy them on amazon earplugs um once you do your budget how much money you spend in a month okay then it becomes how much money you need to make a month but we haven't included your time here yet so what is your time worth Okay, so your time before, during, and after. You're gonna be spending time on inquiries, on bookings, on guest questions, on prepping the space, and shopping. And this is just before the guest even comes in through the house, all right? And you have to account for this time. You have to account that you, I mean, you will get better, and one of the things that I do is I have templates. So if I have the same questions asked all the time, and even if the answers are on the description, they're going to ask me. And one of the reasons they ask me is because they are prompted by Airbnb to ask, okay? So, for example, they will ask me, is the space available? And one of the reasons they ask that is because there's many times that you will ask somebody, hey, your dates are open, can, can I book? And they're like, oh, I haven't updated my calendar. So Airbnb prompts you as a guest to ask, is your space available? So don't get mad at the guests asking that question. There is a reason for it. So I have it on the template on my save messages. Um, can I focus the presentation? Um, the person, what you do is, um, Biana is on your YouTube channel. There's a little um, wheel icon, and you change the focus there to qu the quality. All right. So it's on YouTube. Um, you just change it. Let me just see if I can show it to you guys a minute. Um, all right, let me let me out this one. So this is what I listen to while I'm before I before I talk to you guys. I listen. Um, no, it's not Bijana's Lou. It's not her first time here. All right, so let me just show you a little something here. Okay, <laughs> and yes, this is what I listen to as I'm prepping to give you guys a class. All right, so you see this little HD here on settings, you click on that, and then you go quality, and then you could go from 720 to 1080, all right? So do that, and then um, let me just go back to the presentation. Ta-da, presentation time. All right, so um, Lou B. Dice, if it's by Lou. All right, so I want you to think of your time. How much is your time worth, All right? <laughs> and so how much time are you going to calculate? And then how do you um, start getting all of these recurrent tasks redone? So the inquiries and the bookings create templates. The guest questions create answer them within the description, but also just have templates. I use a lot of um, Google Docs. So like, like I said, for example, people ask me if how to get to my house from the different airports. If we have three different airports nearby, I don't have that on the description because it's just a lot of information and it might not be important to them. But I have a document that all I have to do is copy, paste it, and put it in there. It takes me a couple of seconds. 
It's not like I have to rewrite it or anything like that, but I already have it written. And I have it in Google Documents because um, I can access it from anywhere in the world where I'm at. All right, so it lives on the cloud, it lives in the Google server, um, and I can access it from my phone or I could access it from anywhere um, and like that I just have it okay so think about your time how much time are you spending on your Airbnb all right now during if you cook for your guests I want you to think about the, the check-in and key exchange so if you're spending three hours waiting for a gas because you don't have a lockbox think about that is it worth for you to get um to get a, a lockbox is it worth for you to get some sort of key work you know product for you to be able to um use it that is easy for you so you don't have to be waiting for the guest um during the 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 um their stay is the guest questions they're going to be asking you questions if you don't have a house manual um then you're provide you you answering the same questions again and again and again if you have a house manual those questions are there and once and believe me if a house manual they start using it pretty quickly once like they'll ask me a question and i'm like oh i'm going to give you the answer but it's actually in the house manual as well okay so <laughs> so you know think about that if you're cooking how much time are you spending on cooking how much time are you spending on doing all of that cooking, doing the cleaning, doing the prepping, doing the, the, the shopping for that cooking? Are you getting paid for that, guys? Look, if you're charging $100 a night, but you're spending, you know, every single day four hours, plus the cost of everything else, you're making peanuts. Is it really worth it? Okay, so you have to decide is this cost effective? Is this the best way for me to use my space and my time? All right, and you're going to have emergencies. There will be emergencies that you will that just happen, um, information that they want to get and stuff like that. So, you know, just think about all of that. And I want you to think about your time, your time is valuable. Okay, then after reviews <laughs> the almighty reviews so you're going to be spending time writing reviews you're going to be spending time replacement shopping so linens household supplies towels um food things like that you're going to spend time doing marketing for your airbnb if you don't if you be on airbnb and you want to expand you're going to be spending some time on marketing and you're going to be spending some time on, on taxes okay or insurance information or if you have a claim or anything like that um Maria I because I have I, I have done I, I do really little nowadays on my Airbnb on my actual on the house I spend a lot of time more in the consultation so what I do with reviews is I batch them so um like let's say once every before the 14th day expires I'll review four or five people at the same time. Once a week, I'll, I'll once a month, I have a, a document that I create where I keep track of all the money I make on Airbnb. And let's say not only keep track of all the money, but it's an Excel, it's a Google document worksheet. And it has all the information about my guests. I pulled it out of Airbnb. I do not keep all the information on Airbnb. So like, let's say, for example, I just worked on the one for November because November starts tomorrow. So I, I, I has um, the number of nights, how much I'm making net, not gross, but net, the name of the guest, the country where they're coming from, because I want to know what countries are coming more. Um, I also have their name. I request, I ask for their personal light, um, email address. If they give it to me, I have it in there and their phone number. And then I, I write a little comment about them. Um, sometimes they'll give you some information before arrival that they're coming for, um, they're coming for a wedding or they're coming for a graduation or they're coming to visit a grandchild. So I keep notes on each guest. So like that, if they haven't, um, had, you know, this is something that I created. And then I have which listing they're using because I have two listings. 
the days check in and check out and then i have um flight information just so like that i have that i keep a little my notes on the guests i might update them like if something happened like let's say the girls that dropped the ac right so i have that there and when i sit down to write the reviews i just go back to my list and i'm like okay this is who they are so like that i'm, I'm remembering who they are um Marley, uh, yeah i can share it um i'll share it privately but it's it's basically a document that i've created for myself and i keep in that document all of the previous years so i have from 2010 all the way to now to 2016 all the my guest information in addition i create a calendar within it i know it's, it's a double thing but it's just i like to see it um so like that when I'm out of the Airbnb site or the year is over. I could go back to that year um, and go in and see like, okay, when was I empty? When did I have construction? When was I closed? And they like that. And it's not that complicated. It's just an organization of the uh, product um, document. Different people do different things. But for me, it helps me. I also, within it, I communicate to the guests about two weeks before arrival. I send them a, an email about like, hey, you're about to arrive. This is the place you booked. These are the days you booked. This is the amount of guests you booked. So we don't have any surprises. Um, and then so I point, I, I moved them from one part of the document to another part where it's like I contacted them again. If I haven't contacted them, they go below. It means I have to, I have to send them an email. All right. So it's just organization. But I spend um, a couple of hours on a Sunday night. I like working on Sundays. Um, Sunday nights is my night to to prep for the next month. And then I'll contact a bunch of different people at the same time. So I'm just doing it all at once and I'll contact for the next two weeks. So like that, I know I'm gonna be getting emails, but it's all done at once. I'm not spending, you know, because what happens is this. Okay, so you stop what you're doing and you go in and go and do this job for Airbnb, right? Like you're answering inquiries or you're doing the reviews or you're doing any of that. So you're stopping your life and your flow and for you to get back for it, it takes another 20 minutes because you get distracted because things happen and then you don't even know what you're working on. So instead I just do it all at once. So it's called batch. You just batch things from, um, you know, you create the templates, you create all that information. like. Like I don't pay my bills all the same day, every day. I just bash them at the end of the month or the 15th of the month and I just pay them. So it's just for you to think about your time. So let's say for example, when you're shopping, when I go to the market, I'll shop for a bunch of toilet paper or a bunch of paper towels. I don't buy the things that are like going to go bad, like milk or eggs or anything like that, unless I know like, let's say, I'll have a lot of turnovers that same week and I might buy a bunch of things of milk and hopefully they'll drink it because that's the other thing that happens. It's like, what happens if they don't use that? That means it's wasted. All right. So think about money. Okay. This is not a hobby. This is a job and it's a, it's a business. And I want you to think about it like that. I want you to think about the business of making money with Airbnb. Okay. So, um and then think about what's your financial goals what what is it what is it that you're thinking about you know that you want to get to do um what is it that you want to do with your airbnb where is it that you want to go is it to just give you a little bit of extra money is it to pay for your student loans is it to pay for your apartment is it to pay for your expenses is it to supplement your retirement I want you to think about it. Um, look, we all think about Airbnb, or, or at least it took me a long time to think about Airbnb as a business. It took me about two years to get to this place. Because um, I saw it at that time as like, hey, this is just a little bit of money that I'm making. Um, but what happens is it became my livelihood. It was like, oh, this is a business. And then I started taking it seriously as a business. And then I started, I built a website for it. I built business cards, I built postcards. So those are expenses for marketing. Um, but those are things that you have to account for. And it's your Airbnb 
making you money or is it costing you money? And you only will know this when you sit down and figure out your money. Okay. So I'm actually doing a conference in New York called The Wealth of Hosting and it's creating a financial and hosting strategy for your Airbnb. It is a live event. It's in Brooklyn. So any New Yorkers, I hope you go. Um, it will be a tax deduction, so don't worry about it. But it's coming. If, you, if you're in New York or you're nearby New York, we're doing from 6 to 9 p.m. We're sitting down and we're talking a financial and hosting strategy. Not only are we talking what we spoke about, but we're going to go deep into each conversation. We have tons of things to talk, tons of resources to give you. Um, and cheat sheets that I'm under surprise, you know that I love to talk to you guys and I want you to do it well. All right. So now I want you to welcome your right guys. And one of the things is your house manual. You know, I'm going to talk about this because your house manual will help you eliminate some of your time answering the same questions. So with multiple headers, with multiple themes, you could customize it. This is Ken's cheeks. Um, he's a naked uh, nudist host out of Florida. I'm part of our group. Um, you could create different templates. You could create different um, headers on it. You could change it from sunsets to chickens. And you also get a children's, a restaurant's, neighborhood information. And this is what makes your guests open your house manual. Okay? It also gives you a template for transportation for trains and airports, so you have it there and your guest is not answering, it's not asking you the same questions again and again. It has step-by-step -step instruction, it's formatted for you to be able to use it in anything, whether you use PC or you use Mac. Um, and you know, look, Judah who's here loves her, um, and it's just a one-time payment. You don't have to pay again and again and again. I know there's some um, templates out there that they're digital, and you're welcome to use them. I prefer something in paper just because I, I am, and so does my clientele. Um, and so, you know, support the system. All right, so let me just get to you guys' questions. Um, what's the goal per month? I have you already said it exactly. For those who get into Airbnb, you need to figure out what's the goal per month, meaning how much do you want to earn, use that goal, and track your progress per month. Exactly. Have you already said exactly right? You need to, and you need to figure it out. Is this worth it? Um, look, it's worth for you to have, to, to live with strangers. It's worth for you to, um, you know, to, to do the, to do this instead of getting a long time tenant or to do corporate and like that, you don't have to, they, they're there for a month or two months. So you have to figure out what works for you. Okay. So, um, and look, if you're using any other sources, if you're using like Elizabeth just mentioned this help side dot IO, um, that guests are loving it or anything like that. And he has a free plan, some prices. I, I, I exactly don't know what this is. Um, but you have to acknowledge the time you're going to spend doing it and how much, um, or how much is it costing you? Okay. So do you guys have any question? Do you know whether you can take big household improvements as Airbnb is person? I just had a driver repay for thousand because some guests had complained. Kathy, that's going to be a question for your accountant. I believe it's going to be considered, um, oh my God, that it will be depreciated through the years. But I do, look, I just got windows done. So my accountant, I have, one of the things I have is I have a different, I have an LLC for the house and I have a separate bank account and a separate credit card for just the expenses of the house. And that, look, that helps me out at the end of the year. I don't have to go through receipts and figure out, oh, is this milk for the gas or was this milk for me? So whatever is any expense for the gas, I charge it on that particular credit card. It gives me points, free travel, yay. Um, and whatever expenses also get paid through that bank account. All right? So, you know, just... Um, talk to your accountant and find out. I believe you can, but it's a it's a home improvement, so it's depreciation and things like that. But I'm not an accountant. Sorry, I did used to do bookkeeping for a living at one point in my life. Um, any other questions that we have here? 
Um, thank you guys, Elizabeth and, you know, um, Judalo is saying about how much they love their, their house money. Look, I, I like to provide things that you guys want to use. And one of the things I'm coming up with for next year is a website template. It's like you download it. It's going to be really easy. I'm working with somebody on that. Um, yeah, so it lasts more than a year. It's a capital cost expenditure and depreciates over a specific number of years. Thank you, Danny. Danny's from, um, you've, Danny from Canada, right? Um, and he knows a lot of accounting and information about that. So yes, that's, that was, it's a, it was, it's a capital improvement. Um, related to if it's a share asset, then as I would say, you can depreciate it. Yeah, you need to talk to, you know, <laughs> to your accountant. And I hope, look, that's another expense. If you used to do your own taxes and now you have to hire an accountant, that's another um, expenses. So you need to make sure that you account for that. Believe me, I, I have a bunch of taxes that I get to do. Everything. <laughs> I am so happy, Christy, that you know I'm here to help you guys out. Look, I want you to succeed. Everybody has been an amazing ride. Um, I was talking about this to my to my guest yesterday because his life has also changed. He's um, from Argentina and he used to work in finance and now he's here in the United States doing a, a quasi documentary um, journalist piece about the elections. Yay. And he says about how his life changed, how he's not what he used to do anymore before and how we are here now. And look, you are an entrepreneur whether you want to or not. You have taken a chance. Um, and maybe your friends are doing it, or maybe they're not. And maybe people think that you're crazy by doing this. But you know that there's money to be made. But I want you to make the best, all right? So if you're spending five hours a day making breakfast and making dinner, is that the best way you're spending your time, OK? Or you know, if you bought the Ralph Lauren sheets or you know, the very expensive products, is that's the best way for you to spend your money. So think about it. It's not that I want you to be cheap with your gas, because I'm not. I, I don't consider, I buy a lot of organic stuff. But look, my stuff that I provide has changed through the years. I used to give them fruit. I used to give them orange juice. And it would go to waste. Because if they're not using it, I have to throw it out because I wasn't using it. Or like the fruit would go bad. So, you know, the there's you know you have to think about what you provide and you're going to be changing things it's like look i provide bread and i'm about to knock it off the list because it's not it doesn't get in sometimes it does but for the most part they do and i have to be giving it away because believe me i can't i'm you know for me to eat it it's like it goes to my hips all right um kathy's saying Laundry and my inconvenience. I feel like it's are paying me for my breakfast is laundry and my inconvenience. Yeah, but are they paying you enough? Or are you making minimal wage? I mean, and could you be spending your time something else? How much is your time worth? Um, there is this um, thinking of, if you think about your time and you're doing $10 an hour or $20 an hour task, right? Let's say the cleaning person, um, and I'm actually having somebody cleaning come in, coming in today. The cleaning person pays because charges me 20 bucks an hour. Is what I'm doing worth more than that? Even if it's just doing some marketing or if uh, am I spending that time doing something else? And mind you, I do like to clean on occasions just because I like to make sure, first of all, it, it adds up. Like I said to you before, I was sick for a week and it was like $300 in like that in, in, in a few days of cleaning. Um, but also it becomes like, I keep track of like, how are the sheets? How's the house? How's the things like that? Um, it depends on Marlia says, how do you calculate the price of hours? It depends on what the job is. How much will you be paying for somebody else to do that? Okay. So let's say if I'm paying the cleaning person $20 an hour, that's a $20 an hour task. If I'm paying, um, if I take the laundry to get done somewhere else, how much would I pay for that? So that's how much that task cost. Okay. Um, so this is a question about the anti-short laws in New York. <sighs> the king takes your castle city laws that restrict your, um, Judalon is talking about, um, this is, but so are the comments on the anti-short laws. Look guys, the anti-short laws, these laws have been in effect since 2012. These are not new. All they've done with this new thing is enforce it. 
because people were still breaking the law. So what happened was this, in 2012, the law passed, and the law is that if you live in a multi-unit dwelling, which is three bedroom, three apartments or more, you are not allowed to rent for less than 30 days as a private apartment. If you live with your guests, you're fine. Mind you, you're fine with the state and the city. It doesn't mean you're fine with your building. So you have to make sure you're fine with your building. Um, I know of somebody that he is living with his guests. He has a two bedroom apartment and he is um, living with his guests and his building said no. They're finding them $2,000. So <laughs> um, if you're in New York and you're living in a multi-unit building, three family or more, even if you own the building, it doesn't mean that it's legal for you to do short-term rental for less than 30 days if you're not living with your guests. That law has been in effect since 2012. All they've done now is that they included, and, and what I like to call it is like they're fining you for intent. So that if you advertise, whether it's on Airbnb, on Craigslist, you have your own website, and you put a, a pin on, on the laundromat, any of that, it's illegal. So advertising your illegal Airbnb, it's illegal. So they're going to fine you starting at $1,000. And it goes up, first fine is $1,000, second $5,000, the third time is $7,500. All right, so that is what just passed, what Cuomo just signed. Is it good? Is it bad? How is it gonna affect the business? Um, a lot of people don't know about it, um, you know, they, I, I don't know how it's going to happen. And look, even if you have a small house like I do, the zoning rules that affect us, they could still come and cut, get you. So this just, you know, we need to fight them or they will just keep taking away our rights. I understand you alone. And, and believe me, what's happened is, it's interesting because I had a, a, a client who hosts out of Saratoga and he didn't realize that the city had passed his county I passed the laws that you could not rent for less than 28 days. So you have to see what your city is doing. What is the conversation? You have to be involved. And him and I used to be arguing about this because I'm always very vocal about my rights and how I believe on Airbnb and how I believe in that this is a good thing for all of us. But you have to also see the other side, guys. A lot of hosts went into this as capitalist as his best and they rented 10 apartments and they just started doing this because it's good money. So that's the yin and yang. All right, if you guys want me to review your listing, if you have not done it before, um, oh, Cheryl, you said you leave little snacks and champagne, but yeah, but are you calculating how many, how much is that champagne and little snacks costing you? Uh, in my HOA, and it turns out it was right all along. It was a real uphill battle, but it worked. Exactly, Matt, Matt and Jordan is saying about how they had to like really get involved. And and look, you have to get involved. This is, I mean, you could, you don't have to. You could either stand on the side and complain and not do anything, or you get involved. And we just had a rally here in New York, and literally there must have been like only twenty hosts. I was so embarrassed. I was so upset about that. I couldn't believe that the opposition had more people. I think they were paid, but whatever. They had more people than us. Um, there was barely anybody there. Nobody barely showed up. It was just like, come on. And then you're complaining about the tax laws? You got to show up. You got to show up. All right. Um, so if you want your listing to be reviewed, share it. We have another five, ten minutes. Or not? Do you know how to share your URL? It's the little information on the top of your listing. Um, yeah, you gotta get involved. Um, and look, I'm gonna talk a lot about this at the at this meeting in New York. It's a pay meeting. Yes, um, it is happening November 10th. So right after the elections. <laughs> All right. Okay. So Anna just shared her listing. Let's find out what's happening with Anna. Let me just. Oh, look at this. Oh, Portugal. Oh, how nice and clean. Okay. Let me share it so you guys can see what I'm talking about. All right. 
Choo doo 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 doo. All right, here we go. So percent to every money. All right, so I mean this is really nice and clean. I like I like how how it looks. Cascade Centro a Tribuna de Parada. All right, let me just see if this changes language to if I change the .com. Um, three minutes walking to beach. Thank you so much, Airbnb. All right, so um, this is really pretty. And you're saying it's a three minute walk to the beach. Um, okay, so now you see how this is not your first photo. All right. This or you sharing is a room. I would love to have a little bit more, a little bit more art on. It's nice and clean. So imagine you are sharing the. Oh, I've seen your space before. This, haven't I seen your space before? If I seen your space before, let's give an opportunity to other people, guys. Okay. Um, I would say add some of your reviews as part of your captions. Um. You have a really good prize, four people. But wait, it's an entire apartment? Oh wow, it's an entire apartment. I thought it was just a room. I don't know why. I think because of the prize. Um, so I would say, you see, like over here, you're not giving me any new information, and I want you to tell me the size of the bed. Um, how is it that you fit four people here? Is it that the the sofa bed? So I'm not getting any information from your photos. And remember, your photos are what thing the one thing they're gonna see. They're not going to go all the way here. They're not really going to be reading or anything like that because we're lazy. Um, so you're saying that you have four people. Okay, because it says sofa bed here. But actually, show me the sofa bed open. That would be a good thing to do. Okay? All right. I know. Anna, I'm going to spank you. All right. So... If I've seen your space before, do not come up again. Let's give a chance to other people. I know you like you like me to look at you, Madden Johnson. Madden Johnson, what they did was so they have a dot com, hermitsprings.com, and it will reroute it to their Airbnb listing. All right. Um, Matt, what I would do though is I would still put a website that because you wanted to um, retarget those people later on, but we could talk about marketing later. All right, let me share this. This is beautiful, by the way. I love, I love how clean it is and how bright it is. All right, look how beautiful, guys. Nice and pretty and bright and bright, and there's a good balance. You see that you could see the stuff from the windows. The windows are not blown out you can see um but it's really bright here um this is nice and clean separate from separate separates from the bedroom enjoy mountain view um this is a beautiful place oh my god a writer says oh okay so you see like the writer says do you allow them to use the fireplace i want to know matt do you allow them to use some the, the fireplace? Because I might want to like show it with the fireplace on. This is so pretty farm sink. Oh my god, how beautiful this place is. Oh my god, this is gorgeous. Was this your like I'm sorry guys, I'm like um I'm mesmerized by the place. Interesting. Um doorway into the mart room for dirty shoes. Okay, this is um I know you probably want to show off how pretty it is. Okay. This could be a first photo. This needs to be a little bit earlier. Um, just because it's oh my god, this is just gorgeous. Guys, we need to go there. You build it, you build what? The 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 house. Okay, you have 45 photos. That's a lot. Um are you charging extra per person? You're not? Huh, interesting. Look at this natural environment. It's one of the last stones I'm sending the oh my god. Okay, look. Riders cabin on the Pacific Crest Trail. How oh, beautiful. Oh guys, I want to stay there. All right, so this is great. I could go there and do a little retreat. Um 
so I will have like the mountain views. You have mountain views here. I will have like actually a shot of the mountain views from the house into it. Um, just washing up with any view like that. I know, right? Can you imagine? I was rebuilt in 2014. Okay, you might want to say that. Um, so what do you say here? It features mesquite floors and mountain spring refit. Okay. First response, uh, if you want to please inquire. So Rhode Island School of Design gets in, gets a special uh, locator, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what I want you to do is probably, um, I want you to think about, like you could write some of the captions, it could be some of your amazing reviews. Um, Oh, look at that. It's not a rental, it's an experience. That is such a good line. So, you know, talk about this here. Um, you know, experience the last stone homestead in the Quartel Valley at, you know, Hermit Spring. Talk about, paint the picture, and you could use your guest reviews. They have them right here um hike all day long or soak oh my god look my god look guys they get you like um yeah you're not going to want to leave um things like that you have a beautiful beautiful home um you have excellent reviews you come on you're doing it right now why is there two bedrooms and there's only one bed so the second bedroom is the is the office you see i have questions um oh so this is the second bedroom okay so why is it saying that it only has two bed like one you see it says two bedrooms here um but here it says just says bedroom one it doesn't say bedroom two so you need to change this you got to fix that part because i mean literally i read it you see i didn't look at the two bedroom part here um and then you have to like write it over here they say no Wi-Fi. Somebody's asking about that. Washer dryer, free parking, gym, laptop friendly, indoor fireplace. Oh, no internet. Ooh. Um, no Wi-Fi. Do they ever complain about not having any Wi-Fi? It's because then what I would say is make it make that a selling point. Disconnect from from humanity. Okay, but sell it you know you can totally sell it and you could sell the non-wi-fi part as like um oh well then if it costs extra you need to say it then because I, expectation will be to have wi-fi people do not um hi maria i'm sorry i only do two uh per webinar so do yeah then just have to, you have to you have to tell the guests that there's no Wi-Fi, um, and make it as a selling point. Say like you know disconnect from humanity or disconnect from the internet. Um, you know spend the time writing or creating or something like that or painting or however whatever however you want to sell. It. But it is a beautiful place, really beautiful. It makes me want to go there. You guys have amazing places. All right, so what is going to happen next? Next month, I am at the Airbnb Open. Yay. I'm really excited about it. Actually, um, I'm teaching on Friday at 6 o'clock. It's my class. I only have 18 minutes. Um, but I need to do a trial of that class. And it's going to be a private, private webinar. I'm going to announce it out to you guys. So it's just I need to run it <laughs> to make sure that I'm on 18 minutes um i have all the topic is long and so i'm trying to narrow it down so you guys are going to be making the pigs i hope you volunteer for that um yeah I, we're doing a meetup on sunday i'm trying to find a place you're in la right i need a place for us to um get together on sunday i'm thinking brunch um the reason for that i'm doing it on sunday is because every day i'm busy um 
we, you know, like I land on Wednesday and there's an event on Wednesday night for host educators. On Thursday, they're doing some sort of announcement. So I'm trying not to be, um, to plan anything for Thursday, Friday and Saturday, just because it's going to be a little bit crazier. Um, so Sunday, if you're staying, oh, are you, oh my God. Escape for a couple hours. Um, but you know what, Judah Lone, I'm gonna be in LA until the 29th of November, so we can meet later. All right. So I'm I'm staying there for a while. I have friends in LA, so um I'm staying for the first part of the trip with Alex and Tammy. Um, and then I'm going uh oh wait. Yeah, look, Elaine, I know there's many things to do. Um, I do need to do a meetup for the hosting journey people, so hopefully um something will happen. Uh, it is too far from LA. All right. Well, hopefully we will see you guys. You know, I will see you there. I'm going to need you for a little testing of my, um, of my class for the open. All right. All right. So let's wrap this up. It's 12 o'clock. Cleaning person is coming. I have guests that just left and I need to clean up. All right. So think about, think about your budget. Think about your money. Um, and beyond thinking about your money, I want you to think about something else. I want you to think about the life you want to create, right? Because it's not all about money. It's about the life you want to have. What kind of life you want to experience. Do you want to have the time to pick up your kids? Do you want to have the time to write? Do you want to have the time to paint? Do you want to have the time to travel? So, you know, how, you know, think about not just money, but how do you want to be, how, who, what kind of life you want to live. And, and, and I don't want you to wait until you retire. I don't want you to think like, oh, I'll do it when. No, what life do you want now? Because what do it when, it doesn't, you don't know what happens. Okay. You don't know what's going to happen then. You don't know if you're going to live that far. Um, you don't know where is it going to go or anything like that. So what do you want now? Because you can create that. You can create, you can create the life you want. And I am here to help you, to service you. I love the hosting journey Facebook group. It's amazing. You guys are just, you know, really amazing. But I want you to think about that, the life you want. And let's go create that. Airbnb might be part of it. Airbnb might not be part of it. All right. Uh, you might have found that you love hosting. You might have found out that you love cooking. So, okay. I want you to have an amazing Monday. Um, be ready for more. More is coming. Oh, happy Halloween. Yay, I think. Um, and thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much, host, for coming and spending an hour with me. I really appreciate it. And have a good one. See you guys in November. <laughs>